Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. This video will cover on part 4 of the analysis process which is structured chart and entity relationship diagram topic. Okay, let's look at the objectives of this topic. At the end of this topic, students are able to first understand the purpose of structured chart, second, able to transform DFT to structured chart, and third, understand the basic ERD. This topic can be divided into two parts. First part is structured chart, which consists of structured chart symbols, cut line for drawing structured chart, and translating DFT to structured chart. And second part is about Entity Relationships Diagram or ERD which consists of ERD basic concepts and TFT and ERD. Okay, firstly, we have a look of structured chart. Structured chart is a top-down representation of business functions and processes. Structured charts are generally used in the program design stage to represent the logic of a program. However, they can be useful as a process modeling technique to represent the relationships and the flow of data between individual system components or modules. It shows the hierarchy or structure of program modules and how they connect and interact with each other. Through the hierarchical format, the sequence of process along with the movement of data and control parameters can be mapped for interpretation. The control structures of sequence, selection and repetition can all be represented within the chart for a model system. And for your information, structured chart is not a flow chart. It does not show the order in which tasks are performed and it does not illustrate any algorithm. This slide shows the symbol or notation used to produce or draw a structured chart. In a structured chart, Symbols represent various actions or conditions. Structured chart symbols represent modules, data couple, control couple, flag, condition, and loop. Okay, let's discuss on the structured chart symbol. Firstly, we discuss on module. In structured chart, a rectangle represents a module. Module are self-contained system components. All the instructions contained in a module should relate to the functions of that module. The figure in this slide shows an example of structured chart modules. There are few types of modules. Typically, a higher level module called a control module direct lower level modules called subordinate modules and a module that is reusable and can be invoked from more than one control module in the chart called library module. Okay, second symbol used in structured chart is data couple. Data couples represent the exchange of data between module or shows data that one module passes to another. They are drawn as open circle with arrows indicating the direction, direction of movement of the data. In the first figure here, we can see that the lookup customer name module exchange data with the maintain customer data module. Okay, third symbol is control couple. 
an arrow with a filled circle represents a control couple. The control couple shows a message or call flag, uh, which one module sends to another. Okay, next is flag. Flag is a message sent from one uh, module to another. Module use a flag to signal a specific condition or action to another module. Okay, from the second figure here, eh, we can see that the update customer file module eh, send an account overdue flag here back to the maintain customer data module. Okay, next is uh, about condition. Condition is a specific a specified action or state in a structured chart. Eh? It is represented by a line eh, with a diamond on one end. Mm? A condition line indicates that a control module determines which subordinate modules will be invoked depending on a specific condition so in the example shown here eh, so the short inventory part eh, here is a control uh, module with a condition line that trigger one of the three subordinate modules eh. okay next is loop eh. a loop is represented by a curve arrow eh, like here eh? so in structured chart a loop indicates that one or more modules are repeated so if you refer to the example shown in this uh, figure eh, so you can see that the get uh, student grades and calculate uh, GPA modules here are repeated eh, are repeated for each student Okay, in such a chart, a diamond shape eh, is used to show that the module contains specified action such as all logic. Eh? Okay, that means the program calls modules only when certain conditions exist. For example, the get employee pay rates module here will call the module that match eh, certain condition eh? okay so uh, you will need a structured chart that showing which programs eh, will call uh, which programs eh? this will help you to prepare or write procedure code this slide shows the similar example of all logic condition Okay, next is uh, Y logic. Eh? So in structured chart, curve line eh, indicates the Y logic it, uh, or iteration through several modules as shown in this figure. Okay, so if you refer to the figure here, the enter cut times, calculate amounts, and uh, the output payrolls modules are performed repeatedly in the payroll program module. So this figure eh, shows a structured chart eh, loop with three uh, repeated uh, repeating modules. Okay, so this is the example of a studio code that you can write for this while logic example. This slide shows the structured chart that not including or applying or and Y logic. And this slide shows the structured chart that contains or and Y logic. Okay, next we talk about cohesion. Actually, cohesion and coupling are more important tools for evaluating the the overall design of structure chart for your information it is desirable to have modules that are highly cohesive and loosely coupled 
cohesion measures a module scope and processing characteristics. A module that performs a single function or task has a high degree of cohesion which is desirable because it focuses on a single task, a cohesive module is much easier to code and reuse. If a module must perform multiple tasks, more complex coding is required and the module will be more difficult to create and maintain. If you need to make a module more cohesive, you can split it into separate units, each with a single function. In the figure here, the task called Check Customer Status actually consists of two separate tasks which are check customer number and check customer credit limit. Okay, notice that the figure with one module is less cohesive than the figure with the two modules because it combines the two tasks into a single module while the other figure treats them as uh, separate modules. You achieve more cohesion and better program quality. This slide is about coupling. Coupling measures relationships and interdependence among modules. Coupling is the strength of relationships between modules, the degree to which modules are interconnected with or related to one another. Modules that are independent are loosely coupled, which is desirable. Loosely coupled are modules that are relatively independent. Loosely coupled modules are easier to maintain and modify because the logic in one module does not affect other modules. If a programmer needs to update a loosely coupled module, he or she can accomplish the task in a single location. Okay, next is cup, tightly coupled. If modules are tightly coupled, one module is linked to internal logic contained in another module. For example, module A might refer to an internal variable contained in module B. In that case, a logic error in the module B will affect the processing in module A.